Hello everyone. In today's video, we'll be learning about how to create and how to manage uh, basically the advanced part of Alex. Okay, some advanced part of Alex. And here, uh, in today's video, we'll be creating a simple flower pot kind of design using the advanced part of Alex. Okay, so let us continue with the creation part. So here I'm going to start with a new part file. And I'm just going to give it a particular name. And if I want to save it, I can also define a location to that. Then I'm going to click OK. Now this video will be quite simple and short. Okay, so please hang on and follow the video along. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to click on sketch. And then I'm going to create a sketch on the front or on the right plane. Now, once I've selected the plane on which I have to create my sketch, then I'm going to create a simple sketch like this. So it's like a half trapezium shape. Okay, that is what I'm getting created in this particular software. Now it is starting from the origin and there is a vertical line, there is a horizontal line, there is a slant line, then, then again there is a horizontal line. Now I'll click on rapid dimensions and then define this particular height. For example, here I'm using a height of 300. Then here I'm using a length of let's say 170 or 175, whatever you want, you can use that. Okay. Now over here in the bottom, I'm going to use the length of 100. Now if you have to note down these two values, these two values are pretty important. So on the top, we have a diameter of 170 and in the bottom, we have a diameter of 100. So those two values is something which you have to remember. Okay. Now, so if I want to create anything out of this, we have to remember these two values and these are pretty important values. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the height slightly by let's say 30 mm. So here I'm going to give 330 mm just for something extra. Okay. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create a horizontal line here inside. Okay. So make sure the line is horizontal and that line should be below by 30 mm. Okay. So this line length is actually 30 mm. Okay. Or else what I'll do, I'll increase the length of this particular part. Okay. Not by 30 mm. Let's say I'll increase it by 100 mm. So I'll make it 400 and I'll reduce or increase this particular part also by 100. So the now my sketch contain a height of 400, a height of 100 and here let's say it is 200. Okay. So actually my vase is going to be of height 300. Okay. That is from here to here. But here I'm just creating something extra. Okay, I'll explain you why I'm creating this thing extra of length 100. Okay, now once my basic design is done, then what I have to do is I have to make the vase hollow later on. So what I'm going to do for that is because my outer part is going to be a little complex. So I'm going to create some inner line as well. So here I've created a line parallel to this one and it is starting from the bottom line itself. And here also a line horizontal to this one. I just need to give some dimensions here. For example, I want to give a gap here of let's say 10. Okay, so I want to keep a thickness of 10 later on. And here, let's say in the bottom, I want to give a gap of 15. So in the bottom, I want to keep a gap of 15 later on. Okay. Now, if you wish to define fillets and, uh, you know, other information to this particular sketch itself, you can go ahead and do that. Okay. But for now, this is fine for me. Now I'll click on finish. Now I'll press control F that is fit to screen. Okay. So control F, F is for like fit. So basically we can use control F to fit to screen. Anytime we have, you know, we cannot see the model or where, wherever it is, you know, in screen, we can use fit to screen option for that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on revolve command here. I'm going to be very picky with what type of selection I'm using for the curve rule. So here I'm going to select single curve with stop and intersection activated. So what I'm going to pick is this line and it will automatically stop at this intersection. Okay. I know the top height is 200. Remember the bottom is 100. And the overall height is 400, overall height. Okay. But the vast what we are creating will be of length, uh, you can say 100 itself. Sorry, 300 itself. So I have just selected this particular portion and you can also go ahead and choose region selection if you so wish to. Then here in axis, I'm going to select this as my axis and I'm going to revolve this particular selected geometry by 360 degree. Okay. So here I'll choose none. Okay. I guess there are something extra which I've selected. So what I'll do, I'll just reset the command. And I'll go for a region selection. I'll select this region and this region. This would be easier for me. And then I'll select the axis. Let's say this is my axis. And now I'm successfully getting a revolve. Okay. Now here if I click OK, this is what my revolve geometry is going to look like. So the first step is to get this particular shape right. Now once I get this particular shape right, next thing what I can do is I can create a new sketch. Okay. Or I can go to curve and I can create a new helix. Now for this to work, we need to know how helix work. And we also need to know how uh, the other command work, like sweep. Okay, so we are going to use helix and we are also going to use sweep for these two things to work. Now here I'm going to click on helix. Now helix will be by default created from the origin and that is good for us because our geometry is also on the origin. 
okay the diameter of the helix is in the bottom is going to be 200 okay and that is quite important because the diameter in the of the helix in the bottom is 200 now the pitch is going to be the height of 400 because i want to create a pitch of 400 that is the overall height and i want total of one turn so it is creating a height of a constant value a pitch of a constant value 400 with only one turn over here and I want a linear value for diameter wherein the starting it is 200 and in the ending it is 400. Okay, so as you can see, this helix what we are creating right now is technically following the entire geometry itself. Okay, so that is the reason it was important for us to know the bottom and the start value. Now, once I'm done with that, I'll click OK. I'll click on Sketch. I'll create a sketch on a plane where the helix end. You can see over here. Uh, as of now, this is a front plane. It can be different for you. Okay, so create a sketch on the plane where the helix end and then I'm going to create a small shape here following the lines. So here I'm creating a shape like this. Okay, so you can see it is kind of a narrow shape and it is having a much bigger uh, angle over here. In the bottom, let's say I want to keep a value of 10. Okay, in the top, I want to keep a value of 20 or 30. Okay, so you can give any values you want to. And I want my height of this particular part. The vertical height should be 100 because that is what I initially decided. Okay, so this is how big my shape is going to be. I'll click on finish and I'll hide my previous sketch so that you can see the current two sketches. I'll go to the surface tab. I'll go to the swept command. Now, believe it or not, many people doesn't know that in swept also region selection is allowed. So if you have not created your sketch perfectly, you can still go to the region selection and do it. But for now, because I've created my sketch perfectly, I'm going to select this as my connected curve. In guide, I'm going to select a single curve that is my helix. And obviously, uh, you know, NX doesn't like to work with 3D sketches that well. So here, first of all, I need to activate preserve shape. And in orientation, I'm going to select vector direction and I'm going to select the vertical axis. Okay, so that it properly follows the helix. Okay, now once I'm done with the creation and uh, good for me that in sweep command, boolean operation is not there. So I cannot decide whether to unite or to subtract and sweep itself. Okay, so now I can hide my helix and hide my sketch from the graphics area. Okay, and now what I want to do is I want to get rid of this extra part in the bottom and extra part in the top. You can pause the video and you can comment in the comment section below that which command should be used to get rid of this extra portion on the top and on the bottom. Okay, so you can take your time and comment in the comment section below. Now, the command which I'm going to use is basically the trim body command. Now, you might say like trim body might not work because the body itself is not you know, getting subtracted. So here in trim body, the target body will be this body. And in tool option, I'm going to select a new plane option and I'm going to select the top surface first. So you can see how exactly it's going to get trimmed. Okay, you might get a result like this in order to, in order to get a correct result, you have to flip it. Okay, that can be possible. Now I'll click on apply. Again, I'll select the same geometry. Here in plane, I'm going to select the bottom face. Okay, I'm getting again the perfect result, but sometimes you might get a result like this. Okay, so you can flip if you want to. I'll click OK. Actually, I know the reason why I'm getting the perfect result. Okay, so there is no surprise for me there. Now, next thing what I want to do is I want to match the surface in the bottom. So to match that, again, I'm going to use a command called replace face. So here I'm going to click on replace face. I'm going to select the inner surface and I'm going to match with this surface. Okay, and obviously that need to be done because we are using helix over here. Okay, now once this particular part is completed or once this particular part is done successfully, then you can apply edge blend over here to this particular edge. Now, I'm not sure what kind of a value is going to get applied over here. Okay, but I'm trying for a biggest value possible. Let's say I'll go with a value of 60. Now, along with that, I also want to apply some edge blend value to the outer edge over here. And obviously, I don't want to go with a value of 60. It will be too much for the design. Okay, so let's say I'll go with a value of uh, 15 for this example. Or let's say 25, I'll try. Uh, 25 looks good. So here I'll click OK. So I have created two edge blends. Okay. Now, once my edge blend is ready, then I can go ahead and go to the home tab. In the more group, I can select the option called pattern geometry. I can select this geometry. I can choose, I want to create a circular pattern. I'll just reset the command because there are too many things going on in the, uh, you know, based on the previous video. So I'm going to select the geometry again. I'm going to select circular again. Here in vector, I'm going to select my Z axis. Obviously, I don't want to use content page. I want to use content span and it will be 360 degree. Let's go with five copies and see the result first. If I'm happy, I'll continue to use five copies. So here you can see the result is looking quite good. Okay, it is having a small intersection, which is what I need, uh, both in the top and in the bottom. 
Okay, let's try with let's say six copies and see the result. Okay, so that should increase or uh, decrease the spacing between the two. Okay, so I'm happy with six copies as well. So here I'm going to click OK. Okay, and this is what something what I have got so far. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the unite command itself. I'm going to select any one of these and I'm going to press Control A so that everything else is getting united. But I'm going to deselect the body for now, the inner body for now. Okay, so I'm only uniting the outer design. So technically, if I hide my revolve, the inner body is still separate. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to create some fillets over here. That is the reason I created the, you know, unite for the outer body itself. Now I'll try with a bigger value first of radius 25 on this edge. And I can see it is not having a successful, uh, you know, result. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the value to 10. And this looks good. And if you're using a newer version like me, you can automatically or fast selection, you can make a fast selection to all the edges you wanted to. Now once I'm done with the selection, I'll click OK. And you can see the radius has been applied successfully to all the edges. Now I can again show my helix or my, you know, design itself. And then what I can do is I want to unite this with this one. Okay. Now if you want, you can unite it right away or else you can also do something like, uh, you can make the body hollow and then later on unite. So let's say I want to unite it right away. So I'll click on unite. I'll select this and I want to unite it with this. So this is how I can select and make it united. Now I want to make the body hollow from inside. And for doing that, the first sketch, what we have created will help me. Now I'll hide, I'll show my first sketch. I'll hide my revolve for now. I'll click on revolve command again. And this time I'm going to select this region and this will be the axis. Now I'll show the revolve and here I'm going to select subtract. So I want it to get subtracted from here. Okay. So this is how I can make my body hollow from a same sketch. What I just previously created. Now what I can technically do is I can create an edge blend here in the bottom edge. Okay. And let's say I want to add it on the top edge as well. And I want to create an edge blend of 25 or 20 for now and this looks good and this is what I wanted to create for now okay so I hope you got the point and hope I hope you understood how exactly you know this kind of model can be created if you want to add some more designs on the top I can surely help you to do that as well in order to do that I'm I'm not going to create revolve as of now okay so revolve is not created so far in order to create some extra designs on the top this this will definitely looks good on this particular model I'm going to create a sketch of the top plane and here I'm going to create two circles from the origin. So one circle from the center going somewhere over here. Okay. And second circle I'll create using offset because it will be easier for me. So here I'm going to create an offset of let's say 30 and I'll click OK. Now the first circle diameter is going to be, uh, let's say I want to keep the diameter of the first circle to 430. You can give any value you want to. And this is all nothing like planned or anything as such. This is what I'm doing is live. Okay, so here I'm going to convert both of the things to reference. Then I'm going to create some lines. So I'm hiding the revolve so that it is faster for me to get the snap points. So here I'm creating a vertical line and an angular line. And if you notice, I created an extra line. So I'm just going to get rid of it using the trim tool. And this is always better in NX. If you're working in NX, it's always better to create an extra line. Now here uh, I'm going to give an angle of 30 degree. Okay. You can even convert this line to reference if you want to, but I'm not going to convert it. I'm just going to get rid of this extra part. Okay. Now what I'm going to do last is like, I'm going to create an arc starting from this point, ending somewhere on the arc over here. And it is tangential. And to make sure it is perfectly ending, I'm just making sure the arc also lies at this particular point. Now I'm going to convert this line to reference and I'm going to choose pattern option. Here I'm going to choose connected curve. This is my connected curve. Circular option is what I'm going to select. In specify point, I'm going to select this point. And let's say I want total of 12 copies. Because I have given an angle of 30, if you do the calculation, 360 divided by 30, it's going to give me the result of 12 copies. I'll click OK. I'll click on finish. So this kind of design I've created on the top. Now I'm going to select that design. I'm going to click on extrude. Now here I can define what kind of extrusion I want to create. For example, I want to go with a height of 100. Okay, because that is what I have initially decided. And I don't want to go straight. I want to give a, a draft to it. Okay, so let's say I want to give a draft of at least uh, minus 10 degrees or minus 20 degrees. So let's say minus 20 looks good, matches the design. I'll click on Unite. I'll select the geometry itself. And it's almost done. Okay, now what I can do is I can just add some blends over here. Okay, and to do it faster, there are different ways. Okay, and finally I can make it hollow later on. Okay, so for example, here, if I want to add a blend over here, I can just simply select this. I can click on, uh, you know, select predicted geometries and it will automatically increase my selection to all the geometries. 
Now here I'll give a radius of 30 to the inner edge, apply, and then to the outer edge, I'm going to give again a value of 30. But first I'm going to create a uh, you know value of 30 for the inner edge, then for the outer edge. And finally, here in the bottom, again I'm to give I'm going to give a value of 30. And again over here, uh, this time I can I will not prefer to give a value of 30 because that will be too much for the design. So I'll give a smaller value of 10 over here. Okay, and finally this kind of design is ready for me. Okay, like a flower wash kind of thing, which has a good grip to hold on to. Okay. Then if I want to make the body hollow, I can show this first sketch and hide everything else. I can click on revolve, I can select this region, select this axis, I can just get it revolve over here. Okay, then I can click on offset because now it's not going to get subtracted like this. And I can offset this by 110 mm. Then I'm going to show my previous revolve. I can click on subtract. I can select the target body, then the tool body. And I can click OK. Okay, so this is how I can get uh, that inner shape as well ready. Okay, for this entire design. Finally, I can apply some edge blend. On the bottom, let's say here I want to define an edge blend. Uh, I guess I'm selecting the wrong edge. I have to select the inner circular edge. So here I'm going to select the inner circular edge and the top circular edge. Let's say I want to give a radius of 25 or uh, 30. So I'm going to define a radius of 30 over here and also over here. So this is how I can create my entire design of a flower vase kind of thing or of a pot. Okay, you can say typically. And this is how the entire design is going to look like. So I'll press Ctrl J now finally to give it a color. And here, let's say I want to define this brownish uh, or a different color to this particular geometry. I'll go to the view tab. I'll click on perspective. I press home button to make it fit the screen. Then I'll click on shade it and I'll choose studio. So this will show me much better result of what I am trying to create. Okay. So I hope you understood how to create this kind of geometry. I guess the top radius is looking too much. I'll delete the top radius from here. Okay, so let us let us keep it sharp on the top. Okay, so let us keep it like that way. And this is how the design is going to look like. And if you want to change the color, if you wish to change the color, you can do it uh, again over here. So again, I want to change it to a lighter color, a lighter shade. So this looks good to the eyes. So this is how I'm going to keep it. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. Have a great day ahead.